Well, 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 my gentle humans. Howdy, my name is Diana Chu here at Slow Gaze. We find ourselves looking a little bit different today. I wanted to muse to you about a signature makeup look. If I were to ask you who your favorite makeup hero or heroine was today, I wonder how many Wayne Gosses, Nikki Tutorials, Lisa Eldridge's, and of course, Katie Jane Hughes's would come back in my poll. That said, I think of all these people, as well as Julie Adams here on YouTube, I think of all these artists as true artists. They have their own creative, expressive, license to do whatever they want. They are masters of pigment and sculpting and changing and also doing the natural thing if they want. But I want to think of a makeup hero, at least for this video, as someone out there in the world who has their makeup look down pat and they're kind of defined by it. There's a little bit of that recognition if you see them out in the world with that makeup, it's like, yes, I get it. I know that Alexa Chung usually has a bold red lip. Drew Barrymore, for instance, also could be known for her red lip. Tilda Swinton always has that boy beat, that really clean canvas look, almost translucent or angelic features that are, you know, kind of edgy. Those are just the examples that come to mind. Of course, there's certain other aspects of beauty and presentation that do become signatures, let's say a beauty spot or Ariana Grande's top knot. But for makeup specifically, I think of Joanna Gaines, of Magnolia, of Fixer Upper. Yes, I do have some other people that I think of, like Kristen Stewart and her like messy, undone eyes and basically nude skin. I do think of the Olsen twins because I'm obsessed with their fashion. But overall, they have very clean skin. Their eyelashes are fluttery and out there. They have swept up brows, a little bit of definition around the eyes nowadays, and then a peachy matte velvet looking lip. And all of that in service of, you know, their larger silhouettes, their very white teeth, it all starts to gel into like a signature look. And back to Joanna Gaines, I love that upon a little bit of internet stalking, I was able to find one or two posts, and I think they all kind of point back to that one post that she made three or four years back about her makeup kit. And so I went and I bought those things. And I'll start telling you about them, put them on my face for you, and we'll get cracking. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome to Slow Gaze and welcome to Slow Gazeathon. I will be posting videos every day until the 25th of December this year. That'll be my big finale on Christmas, and then I'll take a break until 2021. Resume my Wednesday postings, and all will be dandy. This channel is largely centered around beauty, but also around slowing down and gazing inwards. Introspection is the name of the game. Thank you for joining this family, this little growing community. If you want to support me, you can buy me a coffee and I've linked what I mean by that down below. You can also give this video a thumbs up or connect down in the comments. I read every single comment. So hello from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Let's dive in. Si tu as choisi de te taire Si tu as choisi de te rendre Si tu as tout ton monde à refaire April 7th, 2016 On the Magnolia blog, Joanna writes Recently, I've read comments on Instagram and the Facebook where some of you are curious what lipstick, blush, etc. I use. Yes, we are very curious because it sounds like she does her own hair and makeup on the go every single day and it's usually flawless and it's usually the same thing. A little bit of peach blush, that gorgeous smile with a little bit of nude lipstick slicked on, her white teeth, and then those smoky charcoal eyes. She carries around a pretty basic little bag of makeup to get her through the longer filming days. So it is a practical bag of makeup. I don't see base products like foundation. I just see a little bit of translucent powder that helps cut shine as well as oil absorbing sheets. I see two types of liners, a lipstick, a lip balm, a something white that I can't tell, a little pot of MAC black eyeshadow that I think has since been discontinued, some tweezers, and then the Lancome blush. This is the exact shade that I found um, that she mentioned in this kit. So she says that her makeup 
is pretty straightforward. The routine is something that's simple and her favorite tried and true essentials that she always keeps on hand. Oh, it actually goes to list everything, silly me. Ah, the thing that I didn't know what it was is a volumizing mascara, an eyeliner, and a brow whiz. She has a little blurb for each product. She talked about how the Revlon Colorstay Eyeliner in Black is her tried and true favorite. One of our show producers knows I love this so much that she sent me over a hundred of these for my birthday. This is about eight to nine dollars at the drugstore. MAC Lipstick in Fresh Brew is the best long-lasting nude lipstick that she's found. The Lancome blush that I have today is the Mocha Havana Shimmer, and it's a great shade of neutral blush. I tried to pick up the three things that were the staple of her look and are very specific to the coloring and maybe the lasting power, but I won't be using, let's say, her base products. I won't be using the exact black shade. Instead, I'm going to be Picking up something from my own palettes and my own stash, this black y'all shade from the Umma Beauty Black Magic Poise Palette. I had to put some eye patches on. These are the Peter Thomas Roth Patch Party Hyaluronic Cloud Hydrogel Eye Patches. I have to get ready for my debut as Joanna Gaines. I'm really not that obsessed with her. I just love her ethos and the idea that she can do the signature look of hers on the go without a stylist, without a makeup artist. And it is a fully practical routine that she is now known for. And it suits her really well. It's both dramatic and bold. She can look not too done for any situation. If she's on a red carpet, she's got it. On demo day and she's got a hard hat on, she's got it. The master of her own universe. And I really respect that. So looking at her look, she's definitely a lot more tanned than I am. I can tell that her peachiness does go sort of up in this area. It it seems to either cross the bridge of her nose or it just seems like she has an, a bit of natural coloring there. She definitely has some freckles. And then she follows the eye shape of both eyes pretty well. She does have nice tamed brows. I'm gonna hide my highlights behind. Get back there, get back there. So that I can have a little bit more of the same coloring that she has. I am gonna boost my complexion with the De Bronzy Anti-Pollution Drunk Elephant Drops, just maybe 75% of a pump. I do find that it helps boost the bronziness of my complexion. And it's not like a self tan effect. It doesn't transfer as far as I can tell. Shift my complexion into just maybe one shade deeper while still feeling like skincare. And I know she has a translucent base on, so I'm only gonna go in RMS Uncover Up in 22. I'm only gonna go around my lips and cover up a little bit of my acne scarring as if I had put on her translucent powder. Okay, I am satisfied with that color correction. I'm out of sorts not having um, a routine that's like this and I'm trying to emulate what she's doing so much so that I feel a little bit discombobulated. Instead of her Anastasia Brow Wiz, which I don't think she mentions the color, correct me if I'm wrong, I've put the website that I was reading off of, the Magnolia blog post, down below so you can cross-reference me. But instead I'm using the PYT Beauty Brown Pencil that I think is like the Brow Wiz in that it has enough color to deposit but also a spoolie on the other end. So I can only imagine that Joanna goes in with this and looking at the mirror. I don't want this to be too strong. I was worried that this PYT brown color would be far too warm toned. I prefer Anastasia Beverly Hills. You can see that I have their dip brow um, gel right here. Medium brown, which is very ashy. It's a cool toned brown, which really works with my sparse brows. But the fact that I have dark brown, almost black hair, it just, it rides the line perfectly. And I was worried that because PYT doesn't come with that many shades that this would either be too light for me or too warm and chestnutty, but neither is the case. I am very happy with this. It's relatively affordable as well. Just brushing them upwards, but very much following my natural shape. I don't think the Anastasia Brow Wiz comes with a gel, so those are the brows done. Next is the fun part. This is the Revlon Colorstay Eyeliner, and this stuff really stays on. I tried this before. I was like, let me try this on when I got this. I even used the little smudger at the end, and I lined my eyes, did the whole thing, was like very impressed, did the naughty nod, and then I was like, let's get ready for bed. Let me use my Honest Beauty wipes to take this all off, and 
it would not come off. I probably could have used a micellar water, which I've never had on hand. So I'm lining and tight lining my eyes, but in a very casual way. I'm not trying to be too perfect with it. I know that she goes all the way around, even towards her tear ducts here. I'm not one to draw over my waterline. It just never stays on my waterline, so I'm not even gonna attempt it. My eyes are so downturned on the outside that I do feel the need to pick it back up just a little bit. It will all get smoothed out with this blender side. I don't know what she uses for the black eyeshadow. I'm not sure if she uses her fingers because that's not out of the realm of possibility or if she has a little brush and it's just not pictured because this is kind of about um, the products that she's using and not necessarily brushes or tools. I like to think that um, back in, what, 2017, it just wasn't like that big a deal exactly what Morphe brush you were using or exactly uh, the tools and you just kind of made do with what you had or what worked for you, which I, I do like. I like that balance of here's exactly what I'm using, but also like if it's not exactly right for you, it's not the end of the world. Nowadays, I really fall under the into the trap of going by exactly what an influencer says they're using. Like you can tell that I already went a little bit too crazy on this eye and I didn't have all that much eyeliner on this eye, so I'm even gonna go in with a little more. It seems to smudge out really nicely. It is more of a gel, kind of waxy, um, but it's highly pigmented. Smudger side is extremely stiff, which I do appreciate. It doesn't feel like it's picking up too much or absorbing too much of the eyeliner. It's pushing it around just enough, and you know, that feels really good. I'm gonna go in with my finger, I think, and then maybe use the rest of this smudger end for the black eyeshadow. Having hooded eyes, it makes a lot of sense for me to be going in with an eyeshadow of the exact same color because my eyes are so oily. I want everything to set down. So this is like a very black charcoal-y color. I really love this. It's not too sheer. And I'm just dabbing over the line I created. I don't have such deep set features as she does. And then on this side, I'm doing the same spreading and tapping and then using a clean finger to smudge it all out. So maybe I won't go in with that smudger in the end. Wow, such a gothic feel, even though Joanna Gaines is like the opposite of gothic in my mind. This to me just feels way too much from what I'm used to, what I prefer. I just love that she found what has worked for her and she just rocks it. She just continues to rock it. So the grayness is not melding that well with my complexion. I don't think she has such a yellow undertone to her. She's just extremely either neutral colored or you know tan enough for it to play off nicely and set off her eyes. The grayness around my eyes is giving me a little bit of a sickly look. I would have gone in with a dark brown and a dark brown liner instead. Why does that not look even? <laughs> I slicked on a little bit of my Ilia After Midnight mascara on the top lashes only because my little baby, baby, baby bottom lashes don't barely exist and all of this top stuff is really for fun. What I wanted to get out of this exercise for myself was really this blush. And what I wanted to talk about was this blush. This blush has gotten me so excited to get back into products again and use them up. It's almost like it has taken me by the throat and possessed me to wake up and want to use this compact. It is such a beautiful, slick, classic looking compact. It has a little rose decal. And then on the inside, it's just so classic with the brush, with the side pan. Normally buying something like this, even let's say a CoverGirl blush, I would take out the brush and throw it away immediately. I remember when I was 16 and getting into makeup for the very first time, I had exactly that. I think it was CoverGirl in Twinkle. It was scented. I used the brush. I used any mirror that I had available, usually like a full bathroom mirror or whatnot. I wasn't using the mirror that came with the makeup, but I was using the brush. 
and the scent of the makeup was part of the experience. I have since bought that CoverGirl Twinkle again, but they have taken out the scent, which is good in, you know, general terms for putting fragrance on your face. Just don't do it. Try not to do it if you can help it. But it really has lost the magic for me. I was expecting to be transported back to that time. This scent is so powdery, slightly rosy, kind of soapy. It is strong and the minute you open the compact, you can smell it. So I don't know what it is about this color specifically. It is a very classic color, especially for my skin tone. It reads almost like rosy mauve. It has a little bit of brown in it. That plumminess is giving it a depth. I love it because it's called Mocha Havana and it gives me the vibes of feeling like sun-kissed and tan, all of the good things. Quite glimmery, it has a lot of duo shimmer in there, not just silver shimmer but I can detect a little bit of pink glints to it, maybe a little bit of gold as well. So it has some dimension, like it's a very classic flattering shade. And what I think made it so special for me is that the minute I put this on, I swatch this next to the Patrick Tosh She's So LA, and that certainly has more brown to it, but this has a pinker tone, a rosier rosewood tone. And when I put this on, lush plus bronzer, plus like all of angels singing all together at once, I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Why do I feel like I only need one product now? It was so strange. Nowadays, I'm trying on so many different products, cheek products, face products, highlight, bronzers, etc., to give me a multi-dimensional effect. Let me put it on. I know I'm waxing poetical about this, uh, but let me show you, and maybe it won't be so magical once I say it, but let me show you what I'm talking about. I am going to use this blush brush because I can only imagine that Joanna uses this. I didn't see any other blush brushes in her kit. Picks up quite a bit. And again, she was using it in this area. So let me deposit a little bit and then sweep it. I'm going very light handed just to make sure I'm not doing her a disservice. Yeah, the scent is so strong. I'm concentrating it on the higher ridge of my cheek, kind of where I would put highlighter. It really helps for my face shape to put blush in this area right up to the corner of my eye. Okay, so maybe this is looking exactly like blush to you. But to me, I think I'm feeling the peachiness that I've always wanted to feel from blushes. It's the perfect amount of pink. It's not picking up too much pink. It's not too girly. And it's giving me that bronze vibe that I really, really want from a a blush bronzer. I was gonna say bronzer. You can tell I was way more careful on this side than this side. Let's try to even that out, shall we? What do you think? I'm not sure how to describe the excitement I'm having to you. Somehow this is just the perfect color blush. It's like a puzzle piece locking into place. I loved the melt Raw Honey Duo blushes. I really liked the M Cosmetics blushes. Some of the NARS things were magical. And then this little old lady comes along and steals my heart. And I feel like I don't need highlighter, bronzer. This blush color is perfect. What happened? In the spirit of swatches, I wanted to show you what these semi-dupes were looking like um, in the pan. And I know that the light is so bright here, um, it's going to look very different in different lighting. I do have my ring light and my warm overhead light here. Let's see if I can do this properly. So I'm going to swatch this onto my arm, show you what that looks like. Looks kind of like what it would look like on my cheeks. Really beautiful, those flecks of shimmer are there, but they're not going to, you know, be blinding from space. Next, I have the Melt Raw Honey, and then I have She's So LA by Patrick Ta. You can tell that this is not looking as dimensional as this guy here, but the brownness and the saturation of tone is certainly there. I don't think it's worth swatching it between these two. The powders are really where I'm hoping to compare the two. So on the skin, it's actually surprisingly similar. And whilst I'm like, yes, this is kind of a dupe, on the cheeks, they're just so, so different. Somehow this has, again, like that brownish, peachyish, 
almost purple mauve to tone, and this is very one-dimensional as you can see in the pan. So whilst this is kind of a perfect blushy bronzer that I was hoping for all of my life, and it still has that lifelike, skin-like sheen. Now when we see this, it's almost on the other side of the spectrum. It's too shimmery. It was formulated more towards the highlighter range. Obviously you can use it as a blush. It leans a little bit more mulberry. It has that intense shimmer, that almost white silver shimmer, whereas this does not. It's a contender for sure. So let me pick this up. Wow, what a gorgeous shade. And then on my skin from the left again, it is even more blinding if you see it in the light there. The other two are kind of receding and that's the definition that I want from a bronzer, but I'm getting it from a blush. And then this is where the intensity of the copper, almost reddish blush is coming from the melt on the left. They're all very similar, and the more I talk about this, the more pedantic I feel like I get. But when you find the perfect col color, it really makes everything else fit. So I still think that this is the one to beat. These two are close, but um, still no cigar. It looks so natural, and it looks so healthy, and it's so radiant, and I'm getting that definition that I want from bronzers, but I don't feel like I need to go in again with bronzer to like deepen up the outside of my face. This makes me feel like I'm done up just enough. Wow, I'm not sure if like my rant is landing <laughs> with you all. Maybe I'm just raving mad. Um, <laughs> let me show you this girl. Let me move on slightly, but one last look at this true hero, this true beauty. She is gorgeous and, okay, fine, I will swatch it. I can hear you through the machines. It is glimmery, it is highlighty, it is just perfect. And the only thing that is stopping me from using this forever and ever and ever for the rest of my life is that I looked up the ingredients. And one should never do that if you want your dreams shattered with makeup in the mainstream. Not only is it heavily fragranced and we don't know what is in the fragrances, they can just list parfum or fragrance and hide various chemicals in that one word on an ingredients list, but also I found that it has PTFE in it. Yes, you could argue that PTFE is only sitting on your skin for a little bit, and it's not actually carcinogenic or harmful to you as an ingredient. To make PTFE, you have to make PFOA. I won't go into that rabbit hole, but that is carcinogenic and that is not good for the environment. And another word for PTFE is Teflon. Yes, you heard it. It is stuff that is in nonstick pans. It's meant to make this not preserve better, but just look a little smoother. And I'm not sure that I want that on my face every single day. I said it, that's it. That's why clean beauty is like a movement. Whether or not you adhere to it or believe in it, somehow my brain is having a hard time thinking that it's okay to have Teflon on, on my face every day, no matter how beautiful this is. So that is <laughs> my grand dilemma. And I've been trying to find a clean beauty alternative for this. Haven't quite, quite found it yet. She started it all. She sparked a renaissance. Let's go in with MAC Fresh Brew. I don't own any other MAC lipsticks anymore. I don't love the bullet. The formulation is grand, it is classic, but there's something about, again, the artificialness of it. There is a vanilla scent. Looking at my lips here, they do have that brown cast, but a little bit of gray and the pinkiness is just not as prominent. Let me go in with a little bit of this. I do like the finish though. It does just deaden me out and it's a nude, but it washes me out, can't you see? So I would need to go in with a pinker, maybe almost a Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk liner underneath before I could use this effectively. Not gonna do that. Looking very gray, not loving that. Have to take it off, have to take it off. So pretty, but not my shade. Because I'm so sallow, it just looks gray, especially with this beautiful peachiness on my cheeks. It just doesn't work. Two better alternatives for my skin tone would be this Lisa Eldridge Velvet Fawn and the Charlotte Tilbury Penelope Pink. Now, now let me do some comparison swatches for you. Those are always so fun. MAC Fresh Brew. Looks good in the bullet, it looks good on my hand, but on my face somehow it just grays me out, as you saw. Now this is a much pinker formulation altogether that was 
Velvet Fawn, and then here we have Penelope Pink, which is even lighter, even pinker, and a lot peachier. So these are three very different shades. I'll show you though, if I put just Penelope Pink on, it threatens to wash me out as well, but because of the peachiness, That to me is like a nice concealer nude without totally making me look dead. The finish is silky and slippy, kind of like this. You can tell that this is far more matte. It is a really good shade for me. So what I'm gonna do is bring a little bit into the mix, tap that on top of Penelope Pink, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, we will be rocking. Et voila. So from this little exercise, I would love to hear your thoughts on what are your signature staples in your makeup look. Do you even have them? My sense is that I've been so distracted by palette releases, really beautiful, sparkly, trichrome colors, toppers, everything to make my eyes look really colorful, dramatic, special, and expressive that I've forgotten to focus more on the basics. And by basics, I mean the rest of my face. My eyes take up such small areas of my face, and yes, they are the windows to all of this gentle soul, but eyeshadow captured my heart when really I should have been focusing more on the base complexion, the finish of my skin, balance between all of my features and the strength of my brows, the architecture of them and how they frame out my face, the strength of their color. Do they recede? Do they just feel like balanced enough with the darkness of my eyes? The shape that my blush and bronzer was creating with my face shape and of course with my lips, how my natural lip color was playing with my cheek colors, everything was not really alchemized. And I was focusing way too much on buying new lip colors, bold lip colors, and with eyeshadow palettes. And so coming back to a simplified look and seeing what is my signature, I like the way that that's framed, um, and seeing Joanna Gaines's like little makeup bag, favorites to the point where other people can start identifying what your favorites are. Like I loved that. And I was like, God, I, I know I can get there. So having that ability to see what she had emulate her and then use that as a jumping off point, I've really enjoyed that so much. So if I had to say right now, what are my main signature staple pieces? Let me see, let me, let me take a look here. I can say for certain that lashes are not part of it. Funky eye colors is not part of it. And a really strong brow is too artificial on my face. It does help that my brows are drawn in, or at least they're tailored and really looking polished. So I, I can't let that sort of fall by the wayside. A little bit of definition on the top of my eyelids works, but too much underneath does not work. Foundation is not part of it. Um, concealer, especially around my lips, really helps me. And then this area, this area does help my overall look, softens my look. It softens me, it gives me a little bit of liveliness. That's kind of where I want the expression to be. Isn't that weird? We always think that, you know, blush is just part of the thing. It's a little bit old fashioned to have some rouge on your cheeks. And I'm finding that I really love a peachy, nudie, warm lip color, but it has to be very specific. And I'm getting older, so I'm not loving all of the deep reds that I used to have. Lips will always be a fun place to play but I need to de-emphasize my eyes and my eyeshadows because in the end, I just don't have the real estate. I just don't have the deep setness, not the part of me that I want to accentuate. These are all musings from one or two explorations into somebody else's kit. I'd love to hear what is in your kit, what is in your daily rotation. I think I'm slowly niching down and figuring out my own focuses and what I really want to invest my time in, my money on. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you on the next video, which will be tomorrow because it's slow gaze -a -thon. Take care. Adios. Please handle this side up. Upside down